you know, our community is filled with people who are hurting, people who uh, are struggling, people who need help, uh, therapy, things like that. And uh, we we lose people in this community um, suddenly, unexpectedly. Uh, that was the case for my buddy, Dirty South Mycology, um, back last October. Uh, he passed away October 14th in 2023 um, in, a, in a house fire. Caught everybody off guard. He, um, he was absolutely one of my favorites. Uh, he was there for me. He helped me. He was such a cool guy. And, uh, so, so we, um, we did a little GoFundMe, uh, with the help of, uh, one of his, uh, exes. He, uh, helped set something up for his son, Axel. And you guys all stepped up to the plate. I think they were hoping to raise about five grand, uh, for a little fund for, for his college education. And you guys, uh, of course, radically surpassed that. Uh, so I want to thank everybody who contributed to his, uh, his son's, education fund um that that was uh really touching to see how many people cared about him uh but you want to know what that's because he cared about so many people he was absolutely hands down one of the first people who ever um, acted like he he gave a crap about me and uh cared about whether i learned how to grow mushrooms he gave me great advice and uh we definitely were were fast friends um tonight we're going to re-air his original episode um, it's, it's, you know, it's an old one We're we're, we're gonna, we're gonna bring it back. We're gonna watch again tonight and, uh, just remember, um, what it means to be a real cultivator and to be a real part of this community. Um, I think it's especially important right now. Everything's so fast and so competitive and, uh, you know, Brandon really made a name for himself after this episode because his enthusiasm and passion for cultivating Cubensis uh, was just hard, hard to beat. You're listening to the Michael Geeky Podcast, a podcast that inspires people to grow mushrooms at home to improve their mental, emotional, and physical health. Most people call him geeky, and he is a passionate mushroom cultivator advocate and educator every week he sits down with fellow cultivators mushroom educators scientists and therapists to discuss the various ways people can approach mushroom cultivation and how mushrooms can be used to improve their lives all right what's up everybody welcome to the michael geeky podcast the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mushroom cultivation game i'm your host michael geeky and uh we're going to we're going to do a rerun tonight we're going to go way back in the archives right the the one one and a half year old archives we're going to go way back um definitely one of the most popular episodes i've ever had um definitely uh galvanized uh this guest into uh, a household name in the cubensis community and uh, I'm talking about Dirty South Mycology. Um, he has since passed, passed away October 14th. We, uh, we, we miss you, Brandon. Um, I, I know your son misses you. I know your family misses you. Um, we, we all miss your presence and wish there were more people like you in this community. Um, so uh, rest easy. We're, we're going to honor you tonight by uh, showing, sh showing everybody who maybe hasn't watched that episode uh, who you are and what you're all about. So before we do that, though, I'm uh, going to shout out the, the Patreon supporters. Love you guys. You guys are keeping me in business. You guys are keeping these episodes up every week. Um, also want to shout out my Discord. Uh, get a lot of people lately asking to join the Discord. You guys are finding the, the, the podcast. You guys are liking it. You want to connect with people. We got no nonsense podcast or we got no nonsense uh, Discord and uh it's keeping a lot of people happy so i uh, appreciate my moderators you guys are doing a great job keeping that ship sailing and uh really really couldn't do it without you guys um also quick shout out stealthy spores he's still got 10 percent off promo code geeky um he's got the the winter and spring decks they're awesome you know grab a part of history right this is you know in 10 years 20 years when this is all blown up you guys are going to go remember back in the day remember back in the day and it was, you know, it was Dave Wombat and it was this guy and it was that guy. Um, you know, that that's all galvanized in, in these playing cards. So 
um, grab a little bit of history. So uh, when we're all old and on our deathbeds, we can finally think back to all the people who meant something to us in this community. Um, what else we got going on? Booking up Mexico. Sold a couple tickets uh, yesterday and today. Um, we're, I don't know if we're going to quite fill up, but we're going to get, it's going to be pretty full down there. So, uh, if you guys are still considering it, it's going to be a good time. We're going to have a blast. We, we got, we got couples, we got individuals, we, we got men, we got women, all ages. Um, it, it's going to be a good time. So if you guys are interested in that, check out mycotrex.tours. Um, we, we're, we're running, uh, that discount, uh, now until we go. So it's only you think about five weeks away. We're getting there. Cannot wait. Anyway, uh, so let's do this. I've been doing, you know, we've been doing a lot of uh, foraging and a lot of outdoor stuff lately here on the show. I, I got family in town. We, uh, man, I, I had a couple people back out on me. So I said, man, what am I going to do? I want to have an episode. And after I did that, Dave Wombat rerun, I had a lot of people go, this is a really good idea. You need to bring more of these old episodes back because a lot of people who are watching you now, you know, they haven't watched all of them. They haven't watched all hundred episodes or whatever. So, you know, bring back the good, the good ones. So that's what we're doing. We're cleaning up the audio, trying to, you know, just uh, polish it up a little bit and give you guys a chance to re-remember one of my absolute favorite people, Dirty South Mycology. What's How's up, going, dude? Guys? Hey man, uh, thank you for being here. Of course. We're going to go deep. We're going to talk about all the good, good. Um, let's see that shirt a minute, man. I don't think I've, I don't think oh, I've yeah. seen one of these shirts. Oh yeah. I've seen the new logo. I love it. I like yep. it. You got that, that dank, dirty South, uh, yep. hillbilly on there. I like yep, it. Yep. Dan, uh, Dan skis art did that for me. Uh, it's nice. I like it yep. a lot. Yep. Cool, man. All right, let, let's uh, now scroll. I like that shirt, but let's get back to you. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so uh, what I usually do in the beginning, I don't know, maybe people like this, maybe people don't, but I like knowing kind of how you first got into mycology in general, not specifically, you know, what, what your cultivation practices are now, but what your earliest mushroom memories were, um, you know, how long you've been loving mushrooms and sort of that origin story. So okay. when you talk, talk to us a little bit, I don't even think I know this story. So this so, will be good. So I've been loving mushrooms since the first time I met mushrooms, Okay, which, <laughs> which would have been like, I don't know, in high school sometime. Um, I had a friend had some i was like how much do i eat he goes oh uh face an eighth most definitely mm -hmm. so i ate an eighth next thing i know i'm having the best time of my life right. doorway doorways are breathing inanimate objects are moving yeah um it was groovy so yeah. i was from that point forward interested in growing but never really um pulled the trigger on it mm -hmm. until later in my life but you know. So yeah, that's kind of like me. I I I definitely liked them. I uh, I'm still convinced. I I never had. Uh, I think like some light visuals. You know, like the the walls were wiggly, and you know, a little, little bit of visual stuff like that. But just enough to. I, I think my early memories were more like, I laugh a lot. Everything's funny. Yeah. Things you know. Laughing till I cried. Yeah. Laughing till I cried. The doorway exactly. is breathing, you know? Yes, a breathing doorway, a must-have on any trip, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, cool, man. So um, so how long have you been growing? Um, it's probably been like three years almost, like okay. since I started. Um, but, I mean, I dove down the rabbit hole, like yeah. head first. And I made a lot of mistakes at first, like everyone else does, mm -hmm. and learned from them. That's what's important. Yes, that yes. is what's important. Uh, and really, I just kind of hit the ground running when uh, <laughs> when my ex moved out and I had this big empty walk-in closet. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make that happen. And I just got in there and I got to work. Yes, there is uh, something about a large closet these days. that <laughs> it, it, went, it went from yes. a hobby to an obsession to like a passion so fast yeah and so early on where were you getting your growing advice from so 
I found a couple individuals via Reddit's mushroom growers room that okay. actually were chill enough to talk with me and, um, you know, share some tips with me. Uh, at the time, the ones I was talking to, they were running unmodified tubs like PGT tech, the old, yep. you know, with the, with the upside down lid and having great success. Me personally with the upside down lid, I don't have good luck. Mm -hmm. Um, I just buy the, the loose fitting lids to begin with. Sure. And I like shallow tubs because I feel like they almost self regulate the air exchange. If now see, this is interesting. You say that because I was talking to Yoshi one day and he said, well, I really like, you know, I, I run six quart and 20 quart and I really like this 20 quart. I run it's a gasketed stair light. He said, I like it because it's taller. It has about I, a same footprint as, as a six quart shoe box, I, but I it's taller. So you're saying the complete opposite. And I don't know if I have a conclusion yet. I, I like growing so, in shoe boxes. I like growing in the 20 quarts. I grow in whatever, it, whatever's clever, but my favorites are these like shallow 15 quarts. They're like, okay. they're like, they're, they're just shallow enough for you to be able to put your sub in there have enough mm -hmm. room for most of your mushrooms to grow okay. and then you just you either leave the lid on loose and it just kind of picks it up a little bit or okay you know um dove tub dude it. see you, you make your mushrooms do, do some heavy lifting basically they will they yeah, will okay <laughs> nice so yeah. i think i know uh, they're a little bit wider too right yeah, I but the, what ones you're the thing about. and the and the reason I think I have so much success with those seedling trays and the humidity domes is because mm -hmm. the cakes the cakes are no thicker than that tray. You know what I mean? So like gotcha. the air the air exchange it's just kind of dripping off. It's not mm -hmm. really having to be forced. It's just kind of happening. Interesting. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about domes for sure. Um, but I just did my first grow with uh, a max yield bin and found that those little air holes are great only if the, the <laughs> tiny ones that go all the way around. Uh -huh. They're great if you get the exact perfect amount of uh, substrate in there so that the, the surface is right at those. Otherwise, I still always struggle with, man, I'd love to have a way of just moving where those holes are. So I, 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 I have been enticed by you and a couple other people who, who keep talking about these domes, and I, I think I'm going to have to give it a try. Yeah, just some of them, the lids sit on them and almost create a perfect seal, but I got some cheap trays from the dollar store and then some nice domes from Amazon, and the domes are just slightly larger than the trays. Right. Okay. So there's like just enough loose of a fit that it just kind of... Mm -hmm. Does its own thing. Semper Viva, that was a set and forget grow in one of those. I didn't have okay. to spray it, nothing for the for the uh subtrops. And some people have mm -hmm. trouble getting those to pin. I didn't do anything but stand there and look at it. You know? That's that's the dream right there, I, man. <laughs> I'm <laughs> telling you, I every, do every bag, every tub, the dream is that that I don't have to do a, a right. thing. Yes. Um, so Let's talk, uh, since we brought it up, let, let, let's talk about domes a little bit. You um, you and maybe two other guys I, I, I know grow in domes. Um, and I, I believe uh, the first person I ever hear talk about growing in domes was Stun in 21, who he's one of these one, days, we're, we're, we'll get him on here. But, but it, yeah, yeah, he and, and he, he, he said he decided to try domes out just because... Uh, his job was throwing a bunch away and he thought, well, shit, I bet I can grow some mushrooms in these. And he loved it. And he grew some, some monster fruit in there. And yeah, and he and I were exchanging, uh, you know, some, some genetics and, uh, I saw his setup and I was like, man, where do you look at those domes? You mm -hmm. know? And, and I got one and tried it and just instantly loved it. Packed house. <laughs> Yeah, another uh, one of my buddies just uh, posted some pics of the the dome grows, and boy, when when they when they fill a a, a dome out, it it looks really good. It's it's pretty sexy. Oh yeah, yeah, I gotta yeah. Have to try that. So so you like that when you're taking the lid off too. My other buddy was saying you take the lid off and you just it's easier to even harvest the the fruit. Yeah, because because they're so shallow. But you're right. saying you like them because 
you feel that you're getting that air exchange at the right spot. Yeah, basically. it's definitely holding in all that humidity, and mm -hmm. I don't have to ever pull the lid off until it's time to harvest. I don't have to fan That's it. Amazing. I don't have to do anything. Now, are you the little um, vent in the top, I leave them, right? I leave them closed. You just leave them closed? Yep. Dude. Okay, I might have to try this out. Yeah. We might have to do a, a dumb grow on the disc or something. I'll like show that. you. I'll show you. I just buy the cheapest, you know, the dollar store seed trays. And then okay. I got like a pack of 10 domes off Amazon. And You're going to have to give it a try. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so domes, tubs, do you grow in bags? I grow in everything, whatever's you, clever. I, I you, tried the bags for a while. I had mm -hmm. some, uh, contamination issues in my old lab it was like a freaking church dungeon okay out in the backyard uh <laughs> wait churches have dungeons but this one did oh wait yes oh well certain churches definitely yeah. have done it but uh yeah uh the bags um they helped with contam mm -hmm. but i never could get myself to just leave them alone. I don't know how people just let the let it fruit in the bag. Like I I, mine looked like Swiss cheese by the time mm -hmm. I was done because I was like, "That's not getting enough air." You know, I could yeah. tell it looked like it was struggling, so I like I had to help it. Yeah, I have that same problem. Now I can still get some okay fruit, but I the first person who told me I should be growing in bags with DC Mac, and uh, he just kept saying, it's "Set and forget," right? Set and just you know, just set and forget certain, it. And certain like, varieties, no, no, dude, absolutely man. kill it like that. But yeah. other ones, they need some assistance. Yeah, they do. Yes, or they stall. A lot of the slower growers. I had a Yeti bag stall for like two months, and then out of the blue, just pop fruit, and I, I, I had almost given up on that bag. <laughs> so you're most you're mostly tub and domes now. Tub domes. Um, recently, I did aluminum trays, but that okay. start that basically is a humidity dome that I dropped into a tub when it got too big. Okay. Yeah. Now I can't remember. Did you ever grow like open trays in like yep. a tent at one point, I or sure, do you still do that? I sure did. I don't currently have my tent set up. Okay. I don't have a space for it at the moment. Um, so now how was that though? I don't know if I really talked to you so, at length about that. So I would like to hear your thoughts on that. I had some success with it. Um, but I was trying to fruit at one time. I was trying to fruit cubes and pans in that same big tent. And I had okay. set up a smaller Martha in there and they very different fresh air exchange schedule. Okay if you're going to be monitoring it. So like my cubes, when I was fruiting as I would for pans, were coming out kind of squatty. So like okay. I had nutcracker that didn't resemble a nutcracker that you've ever seen. It looked like, uh, looked like a ghost almost, you know, like, yeah, it was just, just super short squatty fruits is what I was pulling when I did that. Okay. But, um, I get, I was getting full flushes on open trays of like blue meanies, you know, the, the quick mm -hmm. fruiters, the yeah. ones, the ones that don't take a long time to mature, those are the ones that you're going to have success with open like that. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, that sort of makes sense. Yeah. I want to get, I want to try it. It looks so cool. I remember seeing, I think it was some pictures from you where you're just like walking into a tent and it's just all these open trays. It looks so cool. I had, I had a few, I had a few that was like that. Nice. Yeah. Um, so Let's talk a little bit about um, just your, your basic process. Let's talk about uh, what grain you run. Okay. Um, recently, I switched to millet. I'm a huge fan of that Jesse Noller, no soak, no simmer millet mm -hmm. tech. He got a video on YouTube. Yep. Perfect. Perfect every time. Agree. It saves me time, saves me effort, uh, saves me guessing, like, oh, is it hydrated right? You know, all sorts right. of It just is worth the extra money that millet costs <laughs> in my mind. Yeah. I never had a problem. Even, well, even now I run a lot of popcorn and popcorn is not cheap either. Um, I, I haven't sourced like a big industrial supplier for popcorn, but I just go to the grocery store, but that's kind of what I like. It just, whenever I need, I can go run and get it. But at I the end of the day, that. if it's quality, it still doesn't cost that much. Like, okay. You know, oats, maybe oats are like 20 cents a jar, but, well, not only, but what not is only is it 
not only is it saving me all that frustration, but like my colonization time mm -hmm. lightning fast with the millet. So yeah. many little pieces, you get so many inoculation points. It's you really do. Yep. We uh yeah, well, my buddy P Funk, he uh he just sent me a shirt which sadly shrunk in the wash and doesn't fit me now, but we're going to get it we're going to figure it out and uh he's he's got a cool uh he's got that old um Miller, you know, it's Miller time. You know that logo for beer? Only yeah. instead of saying it's Miller time it says it's millet time, so it's millet time <laughs> yeah it's a, a little millet gang going on here well i, I i'm definitely i like on your it side i used to be i used to be you know ride or die for oats and then mm -hmm. oats wasn't very ride or die for me so right. <laughs> yeah i'd I, say uh, i probably have had the most contamination with oat jars and i always wonder your prep your prep has to be on point yeah. with the oats but the thing is you're not going to get the same consistency with the hydration of the oats as you do right. with the millet prepping it yeah. this way. Like every time I've tried to no soak, no simmer oats, I don't believe that tech. That tech is BS. That shit doesn't work right. Right. Whoever says it does, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay. So I got a couple questions for you. Um, first question. What's good. Wants to know is the colonization time with millet that much faster than oats. Yeah. You have about, I would say for one, for every one piece of oat, You've got how many pieces of millet? Like three to five. Yeah. It's like, not more. It's not more. Yeah. 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 I agree with that too. Um, and the other, I did a grow one time where it was all the same um, culture. And then I, I used uh, popcorn. I used oats and I used millet and the prettiest, most even canopy came from the millet. I mean, it wasn't even a comparison. Yeah. I had similar yield for all of them. The, you know, bioefficiency is about the same, but as far as quality and beauty and evenness of the canopy, that just getting that even inoculation across the board, I think it really strengthens the something about oh, yeah, the, sure. the mycelial network or something like that. For sure, for sure. Um, and even even uh oat bags they take like twice as long to colonize as a bag of millet i think you are right there too they really do the smaller pieces get eat up faster yeah so um okay then one other question all right here we go um meanderthal it's funny uh anyone anyone else have an argument as to why milo uh is worse than millet Show I me, only, show me a no soak, no simmer Milo prep. Yeah, and I'll run it. <laughs> now, run my it. my buddy Sean has done it, and it's pretty good. I think the issue always with Milo is I don't think the hull's quite as thick or durable. So I, I think you maybe run into you really. It's hard to ride that fine line of actually getting enough hydration and not like getting mushy. Milo is is what I've been hearing. Yeah, I've never attempted to cook it myself. Uh, uh, not either. Now, my very first, I bought a bag of sterilized grain, and that was Milo, and it contaminated. So that was the first and last time I ever used Milo. But I know lots well, of people who do use it. That wasn't your fault. It probably was not my fault. Probably not. All right. Okay. I think we're, yeah, one other person wanted to know if you ever did Milo, but. I've used it. I just haven't prepped it myself okay okay all right so let's keep going sorry back so so you are now a uh, hundred percent all day every day millet yeah yeah right now i got three fat bags of millet sitting in my kitchen <laughs> nice yep and uh so then for substrate uh who you buy do you care i make my own generally mm -hmm. um if i do buy sub uh I historically have shopped at Myco Alchemy. Um, okay. Their stuff is top notch. Yep. I have had the best bag grows with their substrate bags. They have these three pound bags of sub for fruiting, the XLS okay. bags or whatever. Perfect. Nice. Just throw throw a, a pound and a half of grain in there. Mm -hmm. Let it rock. Nice. Yeah. Um. Now, if you so, I had an issue for a while. 
Chip where... the Cap does no soak, no so uh, no simmer Milo every of time. Of course he does, but of will, course he tell us, do. he, will he tell us his secret recipe? That's the that's what we have to find out. Uh, um, I don't add anything to my grains either, as far as now Milo goes. theoretically should be a good grain, and I I think it is a good grain because it's slightly larger than millet, right? So it should hold maybe a little bit more moisture. Now I occasionally have run. 50 50 oats and millet and i also like that but i don't know if i think that's necessarily better or worse. it'll make your oats colonize faster i feel like that's right. probably yeah um all right so so how about you for uh brands do you have a specific brand of cocoa that that you like versus uh others, or do you not care I'm, I'm not too picky i buy um I just get it off Amazon, man. Mm -hmm. It's that. I wish I could remember that the name big of the ten pound brick, right? Sometimes, or sometimes yeah. it comes in a box with like ten bricks. Oh, uh, okay, yep. Yeah, um, but my substrate uh, recipe is fairly, fairly you keep, simple. Man. You keep it simple, okay? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I, I add, I, I add a couple of things that like, uh, not everybody is going to be privy to adding, but like, mm -hmm. it's still simple. Nice. Uh, like yeah, low no purple chips. Kool Aid. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We're, you're down south. You got purple yeah. Kool Aid. Yeah. I I dropped I dropped the gypsum. Uh, you did. Yeah. See, and I just together. added it back. I, no, no, no. I, we'll see. I got rid of it, and, I, and instead of gypsum, I substitute with azomite. And you do. Calcium, and calcium carbonate. I have not used that yet. I've heard a lot of people who do use. It. I think Good Fun uses it, and. Yeah, um, yeah, and uh, people. And if I'm feeling fancy, I'll use bone meal too. Bone meal okay. will translate to density in your fruits. Now I can't remember. Is bone meal is that the same as it, lime? It's it's fish bone meal. It's like ground up fish bones. Okay, but and, do you uh, know like what's in? It? Is it phosphorus? Is it it's it's nitrogen? What uh, is it? Calcium. It's calcium. Calcium. Okay. Yeah, it's bones. It's calcium bones Mineral, dude and, and minerals yeah and, and it okay. just makes your makes your fruits so solid so solid the good thing the good fungi showed me that he showed me a side by side okay one time that he ran and it was like night and day one with bone meal one without the one without looked like it was lacking huh. uh, compared to the other one and both bags were beautiful but i mean right. like the bone meal bag was like all right, I think I have some of that out in the garage. I might have to. I'm telling you, I have to give that a try. So yeah, I've been I, I've been farting around with with adding different things, and um, I like the the worm castings. I got that one from Stunning. Um, oh, yeah, I, I haven't used those I, yet. I'm liking that so far, but I haven't done the azomite. I want to try that. Um, so for so for many like, things to try for one like regular size brick of cocoa. Um, if you look at like the old shroomery board, it's like. Two handfuls of gypsum, mm -hmm. a brick of cocoa, so much water, blah, blah, blah. Well, is since I'm not using the gypsum, my recipe is either two handfuls of azomite or mm -hmm. a handful of azomite, handful of calcium carb, and then just a little of uh, <laughs> the bone. And then meal. just a little magic. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. When, um, I think I'm going to have to try the, the old bone meal. I mean, and I'm always up recently. For Anything Strong. you recommend, anything good fun recommends, you know, I'm I'm probably gonna try it. I gotta see what's yep. up. Um all right, so you rock millet, you you don't overthink your substrate. Um no, I don't running... I don't measure anything. I know okay. a lot of people in the myco community, they uh -huh. tend to be very O C D with yeah. their measurements. They want sure. exact, they want to know. For me, yeah. it's less complicated. Like get that shit wet. Cut it with verbiculite right. until it's right. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. And that's pretty much it. Like, yeah, you're. I can't cook that way, man. I gotta have. A, if I got a good recipe, man, I can make you some good food. But if I don't have a recipe, I cannot do it by feel. I. It's just not See, me. I. I used to be a chef by trade, so okay. everything is there everything is a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah. But it, it all it all comes out the same in the end because right. I've got, I've got it down to where yes. I know. You know. Um. Oh. Uh. I'm gonna pull this one up because because I agree. Uh, Horny Kitty, uh, how you doing? Haven't talked to you in a minute. 
Uh, I agree, Horny Kitty. Biochar is also really good. Um, I I read an article that said it's got a lot of surface area that the mic like that it helps for um, speeding up colonization. And I I have not hated it so far. I have of course not done any side by sides to actually compare. So. Yeah, I'm unfamiliar. I'm unfamiliar with it. It's just like you know, uh, little broken up bits of burnt shit i don't i don't really know how they make it but it looks like i basically bought a really expensive bag of charcoal bits of charcoal yeah okay fair enough anyway um so let's talk a little bit um i think uh i think i can safely say that one of my top three favorite varieties i've ever grown is still stormtroopers <laughs> consistently pack house everything i Bad cannot stuff. yeah i cannot say enough about one i i remember the first time i showed my wife a little six quart shoe box of them and she just looked at them for like five minutes she's like well, these are just the most beautiful Gorgeous. things i've ever seen Gorgeous. in my life yeah um i love those things they they have a very interesting uh medicinal effect uh which i also like uh yeah. i think a little distinct from from any any other cube I've I ever found, had. I, I found them pretty mellow. I thought the storm yeah. were pretty mellow. Yeah, they're, they're mellow. Um, but good. But I like them. Like, I know. like a museum dose for them. For sure. Well, what was awesome was my idea was with the stormtroopers, just always their dominant trait is tub packing. Like, that, that's yes. just what they do. So I thought, well, why don't I just try to slap them with whatever I can slap them with? And it was, you know... Let's do Stormtrooper, and the the first one was uh, we we were gonna do KSSS because my buddy had a swab that he got from Dave Wombat from Dave Wombat's old KSSS print, so it was a over ten years old, so it was a zombie. Oh, cool. And then okay. when growing it out, multi splore, he fruited the initial swab plate and caught an albino right off the bat. Okay. And that's what we used for the Stax hybrid with Stormtrooper. Oh. So cool. it's an abbreviation, Stormtrooper and Albino KSSS Zombie Stax. Nice. Yeah. Dude, I haven't grown the Stax yet. I got a buddy who has. I, I definitely need to. <laughs> um, but okay, so let's, because I get a lot of questions, and I I would say maybe every two months I DM you and ask you the origin story of Stormtroopers, so yep. this way we can get it on public oh, record. I should have sent you those pictures. I have. That's okay. You, you, okay. you Just tell us the story, and, and then that can be, you can do a little Instagram post tomorrow or something like that. <laughs> okay. So um, I was growing out this tidal wave uh, culture that I was given, and I'd grown it a couple of times and it was just kind of normal looking fruits. And then okay. this one time I, I went to, I went to Oregon for visit a friend. I came home, I grew it out after I got home and it was just half and half like albinos and like short, fat, squatty albinos. They didn't even look like the troopers look now. Not, not at all. And I, I cloned one of those. And, uh, the next time I ran it, cue the picture with the things running up to my arm. Oh yeah, here let's pull this picture up. We do have some of these. Okay. Yeah, this this was the first clone run of stormtroopers. That's what it produced. Um so that was after because I've seen this picture, like I said, you gotta post this tomorrow on your Instagram. Yeah. But yeah. but it was a tub that basically had two fundamental phenos, the the albi uh, albino and regular. And uh, yep. so you're saying you cloned an albino and then that happened. That happened. First clone run in an unmodified, shallow, hefty wow. high rise tub. That's cool. That's I originals. never even took the lid off. I popped the lid to those laying sideways all in the tub. Okay. <laughs> and now they've evolved. They're very noodly here. Now, not that they've completely lost that trait. So the but, latest um, gen. They've the gotten latest. very sophisticated, man. Yes. The latest generation that is stacks. That's stacks. Okay, we'll we'll yeah. come back to stacks. Okay. So the the latest generation of stormtroopers has taken on more of a PE look because stormtroopers are an albino tidal wave ISO mm -hmm. technically. So PE's in there. It just wasn't very like prevalent. Right. After that clone, but here going back to spore a few times. Now they're getting thicker. 
the caps are looking dumpy. The last time I ran stormtroopers, mm. they didn't even turn up like oh. like they usually do. They they stayed kind of a bell shape, right. really cl- really really clean looking. Hey man, I gave thick. I. I, I grew it, I don't know, a handful of times and I had a lot of swabs and just over the year that I've been doing this, I've I've given them all out. I have no more stormtroopers. So hopefully somebody <laughs> someday when I'm just fiending for, for some more uh troopers in my life, I, I can get them back. But you're you're doing all these other things with stacks and and some other cool stuff. Yeah. So what else do you want to talk about? I want I want to talk about some more because I think this is really what you do well, which is uh, you get in there and you I just, kind of do what Dave Wombat does. You just I roll just up your try. sleeves and go to work, man. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what do you want to talk about next? Do, do you want to quick talk about stacks here since I, I pulled sure. it up for a second? So this was the albino KSSS zombie cross with Stormtrooper. Okay. And um, the idea was we wanted to make another big albino mm-hmm. that – didn't dump spores because that's why we all love albinos. They don't right. dump. You can let them go and they are strong because they can go all the way without dumping. Okay. Um, and you let them go until they turn blue underneath because that's when the spores have been ejected from the bisidium. And it's at right. that point that they stop producing psilocybin. People that pick okay. them when the veil breaks, oh, it breaks my heart every time. With these really albinos. see because i always hear the do opposite not, where do not pick it when the veil breaks for an albino they're not they're not gonna dump you know oh, what I mean? for an albino okay yeah yeah if, if it's okay. one of those fast fruiting dark spore one you mm-hmm. gotta pick them but the mutated ones that don't dump uh let um, them go yeah let them go let them go okay yeah all right so this was so now i think somebody asked me uh in the comments here well, asked you what hybridization method um, are, do, are you using one method or do you use multiple methods? Um, I have used multiple stacks was done with um, a smash technique using antibiotics. Um, okay. Yeah. Like in the plate, the plate had antibiotics. In it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And, um, but hybrids like blue storm. That's Bluey uh-huh. Vuitton and Stormtrooper. Okay. That one was done with a recombination kit. Okay. So I got multiple looks that looked like totally different fruits from the first run post recombination. You know, they, they just, okay. they all, they all look different. And I, I picked the one that um, was worth it to me, seemed worth it to me. Uh, okay. And, and yeah, let, well, let's, since you brought it up, let's pull them up. Okay, so you know the picture with the with the two mushrooms in my hand that are kind of like they're like. Let's see here. I sent you with all the blue storm stuff. It's me holding them. With just two. Yep, it's just those two. That this one. That that was the no. first run post recombination of blue okay. storm right okay. there. That's the one. So that's that stormtroopers and bluey. Yes. Okay. Uh, and what it did, you can see, you can see it. It made it a lot lighter around the edges, uh, and they started to open a little more. Not not so much this run, but the the following run after I cloned this right, and then let me ran see it. If I can find. Yeah. What is it? Okay. Sorry, my bad. I think it might be a different. No, that's Clockwork Vader. No, this is all I have. Yes, Smash is a double swab, by the way. So this was the clone run out of that dimpy, you know, that wimpy little fruit. Yeah, okay. That I just showed you. It produced all these donks. Damn, um, those are nice. No, yeah. now also, is this that 15-quart tub you're talking about? It sure is. Okay, all right, yep. I, Shallow 15-quart. I recognized it. All right, so this is this is the the first recombination. This is the first run after that. Yep, and then this, this is, is yield from that. Yep, and then now I am running multi spore uh, grows of this, and I have caught some very weird stuff for multi spore. Okay. Um, crazy looking fruits. Uh. And it it wasn't just like one mutation either. It was like I, I had isolated enough 
that they're all kind of popping up and they're not looking like huh. I was expecting them to look anymore. So you're still working blue, yeah. you call them blue storm? Yes. I, yeah, I'm currently, I'm just trying to further the genetics. Like, right. You got, everybody's been showing me love and buying my cultures. So I have to restock and I do not like to expand my cultures. So if I'm going to restock, I like oh, to just okay. go, go next generation. So I'm always on to the next one, on to the mm -hmm. next one. Yeah. And then that's, that's why it slaps. That's why it hits. The more you go back to spore, the better your stuff is going to perform. Overall. That, uh, from a few people now I, I i'm inclined to believe it yeah. I, I remember the first time i got think it I, fresh. first time i had a really long talk with yoshi and i was like what the fuck is dave doing how is he just getting <laughs> everything like how is he just crushing and he was like well i think he does a lot of grows like he he's figured he does you know one-to-one -one. oh and he's he just, just sends it bacteria or not oh send that yes, yes. and then that's how he catches a lot of those mutations yeah. are from stress from the and bacteria. he just he's just love it i love it <laughs> cloning it all he's like if you don't clone it you don't know if you're gonna get it back or not and, and going it's back true. to spore yeah you gotta clone it like and take the swab i always take three swabs three sets of swabs and my clone okay and then nice. i usually send one set to my buddy and i'm like okay now you try to stabilize it and i'll try to stabilize it and, right. you know yeah i think we can as I'm getting into this part of my at home mycology more, I, I think there's something to be said for having a little group of people where instead of you trying to do all the work yourself, you know, yeah, s send five sets of swabs out to five buddies, let them all grow it out. Who knows who's yeah. going to hit with yeah. yeah something cool. So the I I did that uh, attempted three way recombination. That was done using one of those magic myco recombination kits. Comes okay. with like, you know, the some antibiotics, a fungal transformation buffer, okay. a couple other things, whatever he calls it. Um and I used Jedi, um uh Clockwork Orange and Stormtroopers. And we ran it and um I think I, you, you sent me a picture of this actually. Yeah, that was the one that's got all the fingerprints on it. They really proved that this one. This one? Yeah. This is the first clone run post recombination. Um a buddy of mine, uh psychedelic life uh, on IG, um mm -hmm. he was sent a plate from my recombination attempt. And when he grew it out, he got the craziest fruits. This is the clone of the fruit that he got. It was a hundred and forty six gram fruit that was a giant version of what looked like clockwork, but it was orange in the middle and albino around the edges like it 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 was all nuts looking because it was literally had a little bit of everything and it just smashed together. So right. it obviously didn't translate over mm -hmm. <laughs> into the cologne, but this is a dope looking fruit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if I and could get a tub full of those, I'd be happy. I I harvested quite a few. Nice. Uh, you know, I'm trying to trying to get that to recreate. But Clockwork has given me hell with stabilization. Okay. I have like ten and different Clockwork things. I am trying to stabilize, and not one of them wants to reproduce the same results the second okay. time. They never look the same. All right, I think you sent me some pictures of them. Yeah. Let's see if I can find them here. All right. All right. Let's talk about clockwork. It's a good looking fruit. Reminds me of ODPE. Anything where the cap looks like a ghost, you guys already know I'm going to like it. So, yeah, it's, uh, I, I believe it's, I don't know what kind of reverted tat it is, but I've mm -hmm. heard a lot of people speculate. I bet I could just ask Dave. He would tell me. Yeah. But I, 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 either. I heard somebody, a lot of people think that it's like a reverted ghost. Hmm. Um, yeah, but I don't I, know. I, some of the other looks that it throws, though, it makes it, it makes you wonder. You know, oh, that yeah. one. Let's that talk one, about this guy. Tirelessly have tried <laughs> to stabilize that one. It has not produced another grenade yet. Oh, it that just thing. It it produced short stubbies on the first flush and then it produced 
like 41 gram fruits, multiple 41 gram yeah. fruits on the second flush. There's just no rhyme or reason to what mm. it does. It just does whatever it wants. The culture is insane. It is. <laughs> it's frustrating. There's some bags. There's proof you grow in bags. Yeah. There yeah there's... And then now uh, what are these caps? I like this. That's clockwork. Huh. Yeah. I'm telling you, it just throws different looks every time I run it. Every time. Oh, that's cool. Well, maybe it's, maybe it's it's, fun. it's, it's throwing phenos like clockwork, but none of yeah. them are consistent like clockwork. It's challenging. That's what I like about it. Yeah. It's challenging culture. Yeah, man, that's <clears throat> cool. All right. What else do we got here since we're looking at pictures? Oh, do you <laughs> want to do um the the ones you just sent me last minute? Oh yeah, sure. The, so Blue Storm. This is what the multi-spore run is producing right now. Nothing like the other ones. Um, so, yeah. Be, so, we're talking about these guys, which yeah. is uh, Bluey Vuitton crossed with Stormtroopers. And then now you said you went back to Spore, and now you're just randomly getting this guy. Yeah. That's that's the one that popped up. And I thought, you know, oh, I'm just going to get one fruit in this flush. It's going to suck up all the moisture. Mm -hmm. So... I just kept misting it. Uh, I don't usually, I'm not a big mister, but mm -hmm. um, after doing that, more pins started to pop on the surface and they're all coming in big and dumpy like this one did. So I'm curious if they're all going to do this or not because it's yeah, multi. That's cool. Yeah, dude. It, and, it, and it's multi spore. So like it just very, uh, very exciting. <laughs> it's like it's it. still, it's still rock hard too. I don't know how big it's going to get. So this is this is like in progress. Yes, right now. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I like that, man. Um, so how do you uh talk a little bit about the recombination kit? How did you decide to give that a try? Uh what other you know projects I've been because why not? I, I like yeah. that. That yes, why not? <laughs> For me it's usually money, but yes, uh, why not? Right. Well, see. <laughs> I wish the directions were a little better. The first kit that I wasted, but oh, uh, okay. I bought it and the directions weren't all that clear because mm -hmm. they only would have been clear had I bought it with the extra stuff that he offered with it, which was, okay. which was magic mycology little two milliliter containers mm -hmm. with their liquid inoculant in it right. or whatever. You could get one and then all of a sudden the directions would make sense. If I had one of those sitting in front of me, it would have made sense. Wow. Okay. But the way that they read and me sitting there with agar plates, it just wasn't so it little, wasn't a little bit of up. a learning curve, but yeah, you have it to get like your you stuff, figured it out. You got to get your mycelium suspended in sterile water uh -huh. before in its own tube before you start. They don't okay. say that anywhere. They just say take mycelium, put it in here. They don't they don't specify that it should be in water, but then when you get something from them, it came in in these little vials and there was vials of water. I'm like, oh, it all makes sense now. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have the same problem with, with my sterilizer. The foot pedals got a switch on it. And every once in a while, somebody will accidentally flip the switch and then they'll call me and be like, uh, it just, it's instant. All the lights are switched around now. And I'm like, God damn it. I, I should probably write instructions for that foot pedal but of course i'm just a lazy piece of shit and i just haven't done that yet yeah well they they had a nice instruction booklet that they definitely paid money to have made up oh, okay. and it just did not read well you would oh. think it yeah it just didn't read well the work right. i mean they talked about the workflow and everything that mm -hmm. was fine but as far as like <laughs> telling you right but yeah, some of that stuff, you know, writing instructions, that's a skill that, you know, sure. it's just feedback. Sure. Hopefully that evolves over time. The The workflow for that is pretty easy. You know, it just kind of involves like uh, cold shocking, heat mm -hmm. shocking, um, incubation, liquid culture medium. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so speaking of Tim. He says, I, uh, I like to use a pestle with the fusion kits to homogenize mycelium. Now, I make my pesto in my pestle. Um, so if I did that, I don't know. I don't know how mycelium feels about basil, but my, I'm, all my mushrooms might get like a little basil -y tinge to them. 
<laughs> um, okay, I got a question for you. Um, uh, Dirty South, what's your average workflow for the day? Like, do you do you have a grind or a groove that you get into, or is it different? Um, Just whatever. I mean, I, I get up. Um, I usually tend to my my IG <laughs> mm -hmm. real quick and uh and I just kind of try to stay busy um yeah get not hard food. to do if you're growing mushrooms though yeah, yeah and 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 the, you know the website orders those those keep me busy um mm -hmm. and oh I, you just got a new website right well yeah same name but it's dot com okay instead of a dot net uh um, oh, it was dot net it's on a different platform that's better okay here, I'm going to try to pull it up. It's still dirty south Myco. Yep. Dot com. Dot com. Okay, hold on. But um my my workflow is uh pretty much just me filling everybody's orders and then uh mm -hmm. then I tend to my Your my projects. children. Yeah, you know, my projects. All right, uh, here I think I got it. Let's take a look. Here we go. Dirty south Myco. I like it. Scroll down here. Uh, oh, so when did you come up with this? Uh, I, I never um, talked to you about this, but I, I saw it one day. I thought it was clever. Mm -hmm. um, elegantly disheveled. I like so, that. Perfectly describes mushrooms. Sure. They're they're beautiful and uh, ugly at the same time. Yeah. Some and and I don't know. It just it just seemed. I like it, man. I need yeah. more gear. I I want an elegantly disheveled T-shirt. I think. Yeah, that's the next one, probably. Nice. All right, now <laughs> let me see if I can figure out. Here we go. Okay, cool. Cool, guys. So uh, so people can buy Stormtroopers and all this cool stuff that you're doing. They just go to the website. Yep. Pretty, awesome. pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, and as soon as, soon as I post something new on IG, as soon as it's ready, it's on the site. Awesome. I, usually, I usually announce when I put it up there. Sometimes now, I sneak one in, but now how has that been? What it what let's talk about the life of a genetics vendor. Um, do you ever uh because I deal with this sometimes where I won't have a sale for a week and then all one day I got a bunch of sales and I'm like, oh my god, it's you know, it's I, hard to hard to manage that that I get fluctuation. Orders. I get orders pretty much every day. Um there's rarely a day where I don't, but it's not necessarily like a bunch every day. Right, okay. Um but it's it's enough. Mm -hmm. it's to enough. keep it going. Yeah. Yep. Nice. All right. I think since we're doing all these pictures, um, you sent me something. Uh, I think this is your PE isolation. Yes. I Let's pull um, this up. This is like OG PE. I got I got my spores. Um, where did I source those? I got them from Inoculate the World, and on their website they say where they sourced their genetics from uh -huh. and it came from the original pe uh uh gene pool it's not like that bastardized penis envy that freaking okay. blobs on everyone and, mm -hmm. and won't fruit right and doesn't dump spores this one opens up it dumps spores they're big and uh just nice nice, nice fruits nice fruits uh, oh yeah and honestly, this is like a, a lost morphology. I think the only time I've seen something like this is with like a DC Mac OG fruit occasionally gets a cap kind of like this. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Like I mean, it. they were just consistent big fruits. Yeah. Um, and that, that one is on my website right now. Uh, I had another PE culture that I was trying to work, but they're too small. They look like they looked like manna from heaven PE, but they were mm -hmm. like too damn small. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I just I just right. killed it. I just killed it. I couldn't get them any bigger. Well, you know, man, all you gotta do is take that camera. This is what what I didn't realize <laughs> in the beginning. It was like I thought some of these fruits were like this big or something, oh, and, no. and then I'm like, oh my god, that guy must have gotten the fucking <laughs> the, the camera like right next to it uh because yeah they're not all when you're actually growing them unless you put a big lighter next to there you 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 don't always know actually how big these things are yeah oh yeah yep. anyway um i got a question speaking of p uh p funk here uh what's the best route to take if i wanted to get into trying some crosses for the first time 
smashing is the easiest Smash way. It. Yeah, it's the easiest way. Um, there's there's a method to working your smash that, in my opinion, is for me historically, I feel like has been part of my success. Uh, okay. On that initial smash plate, take all your earliest signs of growth for your first transfers and then leave the plate alone and either fruit it mm -hmm. if it stays clean or just leave it alone until it pins on the plate oh, okay. and then clone all the pins. The pin. Worst case scenario, you're going to have a bunch of fun clone runs. Right. And it's all exciting because you don't know what they're going to look like. Yeah. But, um. I have had great success cloning pins off of smash plates. That's that's how I got stacks. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I have I have like three or three or four different cuts of that same hybrid, and mm -hmm. the one that I dropped was number two, and that was stacks. It was the largest one. Um, but one of them. Yes, yeah, so I've never done that. I'm so I have one I can actually. I was going to just toss it all to grain, but now you got me wanting to just hang on to it and see if it pins. Yeah, really. No, it's, it's, it's basically you're doing your, uh, your spore work and your cultivation and getting your clone all in one step. Right. You don't actually ever have to run it. You can just leave it on the plate till it pins for this, for the smash and, um, anything that looks funky send it. <laughs> right. Now the other thing, uh, my buddy Ed told me was, you know, for that, that T zero plate, mm -hmm. take a big transfer. You know, if you're running out of space, don't, you don't have to take a teeny, teeny, tiny transfer. You can take a larger, you know, maybe a one inch square transfer and then let that grow out a little bit. And then based on that, you can, you know, pick and choose from there. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I just, I'll look, when I say earliest signs of growth, I mean mm -hmm. like if you hold that plate up to the light just right, it looks like freaking scratches on the surface of the okay. of the agar. So like I just get me little sections out of that, maybe like five transfers. Okay. And then I leave it alone. The mycelium usually fills in the holes and everything right. by the time it pins. Uh but I'll I'll generally have my transfers already on grains by the time the smash plate starts to pin. Mm-hmm. So it's that one is always going to be a little behind, but you get to run your multi spore runs before you run your clone runs. Right. And yes, you're doing a lot of fruiting, but mm -hmm. it, it's gonna what's you know gonna be what leads. That's to the game, success. right? It's yeah, gonna be that, what leads to your success. That's all. That that's what I'm finally realizing. If you is don't if you don't fuck around, you, you don't won't find, find out. out. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, Very man. True. Yeah, that I remember. Uh, I forget what I asked Dave, but I was like, uh, how do you know what to, you know, how do you know if that mutation is uh, just, just environmental, bacterial, or, or, or something that, that would translate into another grow? And he was just like, you don't unless you do it. You yeah. just gotta fucking do well, it. Well, that, that, and I mean, were you doing anything different? Right. <laughs> you know, right. So you, you have to run down the line and kind of figure out what it yeah. was. You do. Um, well, just as a quick little uh, plug here, overjoyed, which it sounds like he was, he says, got to visit your site again. Very happy with my last LC. Thank oh, you very great. much, overjoyed. Yeah, and if anyone is ever not happy with one they receive, I'll replace it. <laughs> well, I will fix it. I, I've received uh, many a genetic from you, especially more back in the day. I feel like we've uh, um, we, we both just got busy, and I definitely get my fair share of genetics at this point but everything you've ever sent me has looked amazing and and been phenomenal and dude i, I just really i don't know if i can express to people how insane those stormtroopers are um one of the guys in in the um in in the chat here he said uh he's grown 67 varieties and hands down stormtroopers is his favorite and I, like I said, they're just so fun to look it, at. They it's just pack, 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 for me. And they're just the vigor of them. Um, mm -hmm. And watching them go from being small pins to just this. I mean, they're just bouquets of. That's why I was white. like, you know, what? Fucking yeah. smash them with everything. Smash them with everything. Stormtrooper and KSS, yeah, you know, uh, 
I Give tried. That. I tried to do Stormtrooper clockwork. Uh, uh, that didn't work. Clockwork yet. is not being kind. It's not that being didn't kind. Didn't work yet. Yes. Yeah. Um, my current, my favorite attempt that I'm in the middle of doing right now so far is uh, Stax Ape. Okay. That yeah, that should be good. So it's kind yeah, of a, a little bit of a back cross. Sure. But only a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. But, uh, I think it'll. Oh. Be- all right, we uh we got more plugs. Wardrobe mycology, uh Dirty South, one of the most <laughs> generous vendors I've ever worked with. I don't also even think I don't even think I make him pay for things anymore. We just <laughs> <laughs> uh, well then Straight that shit. hey, that's a surefire success for a happy customer. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, guys, w- w- when I tell the story about uh, you know, I made a sterilizer for myself and then I made some for some of my buddies, uh Dirty South was was one of those very. He's got a vintage model, man. One day he'll, he'll still sell that it, on eBay for it. for a lot of money. Yeah, I've dropped yeah. it on the floor. It's been kicked around. That thing is great. It hasn't busted. All the the the, the, hey, the, the soldering on it. Everything's great. Knock on wood on that one. Yeah, I mean theoretically they should last a really long time. We'll see. Um. All right. Okay. I think I got all all caught up here on that stuff. Um, so, so for me, this coming year is going to be all about, uh, some more podcast content and, um, I'm definitely trying to do more breeding projects. Uh, what do you want to be doing in the new year? What, what, what should we be looking for? Um, so I kind of have, uh, some, you know, plans going on. I'm going to be, you know, it's going to be dirty does Oregon. Oregon for a little while. I'm going up okay. there. Um, I have some friends that have a farm that has a barn that's empty and humidity and temperature controlled. And oh wow, gonna, yeah, and it's legal, legal in Oregon. Yeah, man, I'm gonna go get it. Uh, Very cool. Yep. Yeah. So you're are you moving there? Or are you just no? I am going to be okay. traveling probably every month and a half. I'm going to be flying up there. Um, and basically doing all the work that these guys that are on the farm, they just don't particularly know how to do very well. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go set them up for success and then come back. Everybody makes, everybody makes some money. Everybody gets their, their healing medicine, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, so let's talk about healing medicine. I mean, we talked about, you know, you you can watch your door breathe and you can uh you know crack a bunch of jokes for um, me it's crazy the mushrooms haven't even been the 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 most like healing part of this process for me okay. the gr- the growing and and just the working of the spores and mm-hmm. cultures it's so therapeutic that i, I found i found myself like i it gave me purpose Yep. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life before this. It just like, I found yeah. it. <laughs> I, that's so, well, I, dude, I already know you. You're like, you are very enthusiastic, very passionate. Um, you were that way. I, you were one of the first that I really felt like this wasn't a racket for you. This wasn't like your hustle to get rich. You'd be like, oh, I can't talk anymore. I got to, you know, got to get back to my mushrooms. Got to get back to my mushrooms. And I, I just saw the passion. So uh, <laughs> you were very inspiring in, in, in that way for me as well. Just like, uh, yeah, man, there's a lot to do. And, and I couldn't agree more. I don't know why it is. I was in a funk before I started growing mushrooms. And they like just growing them pulled me out of it. It got me excited to like get up and do shit. It does. And I don't know why, but I mean, I can grow a plant. It It's not the same for me. I don't know why. Okay. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm just obsessed with the form. Um, I don't know. But man, I I, I hear you. I'm with you 100%. Yeah. Um, um, I'll pull this up since uh, Fresh from the Farm Fungi, uh, Gary here. Who, who, by the way, just erected a, a pretty monumental uh, grow space. Uh, on his property um 
he just said, I think this is what people call smashing. I believe it's related to diamond mating or spontaneously exchanging genetics. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's exactly yeah. what, what they're hoping is happening. Yeah. Um, whether you're doing, now you can also but, do but the gap cross. That's part of the reason that I take the earliest signs of growth too, because that I'm going to have my best chance of snagging some um, mono. Because depending on how you swab the plate, you're by right. the time you get to the end of your streak, that is a serial dilution. That's right. diluted. Yeah. So um, isolate accordingly, you know? I didn't you're even not, think about that. Yeah. yeah, you're not guaranteed for it to work like you are yep. looking at it underneath the microscope, but it's all part of the fun. It's part of the process. Yeah, that's interesting. I just tried another method where um, my buddy Ed said uh, this was a method that they used in the field when they, they couldn't get back to the lab, but they wanted to, to try to isolate uh, monocaryons. He said, just take a little bit of a uh, gill fragment right before they've ejected spores yeah. and take a dab of hairspray or a uh, hair gel or Vaseline. And on the lid of your Petri dish, you know, put a little dab on there and then put that gill fragment on, put it on the Petri dish sure. and then put it on just like a 80 degree angle. And when those spores eject, if you pay attention carefully, you'll, you'll isolate monos just from how they eject. Now, of course, I underestimated what he meant by you got to keep your eye on it. <laughs> and I was waiting till I had obvious visible growth. And it wasn't until I got it under the scope that I realized I couldn't see a fucking thing with my naked eye. Telling like you the, the minute scratches, I got it up, it's the oh, scratches on the surface. They barely, yes. you barely see them. They look, they look yes. like cobweb mold starting. It yep. looks like the same. You <laughs> can cobweb. hardly see it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So th my problem was by the time I saw it, I, they were already, they'd already, um, you know, created dicarions from, from all the little mono growth. Yeah. So. I like, I like using the gill fragments for different things for, um, with pans, growing pan cyans, really oh, yeah. hard. Are, really are you ready hard. to do this? Well, hold on. It's uh, a, yeah, let's talk yeah, we about can. it. We can. It's, it's just really hard to get a clone from some pans because not all of them are big enough not all of them are True. thick enough or mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is genetics uh but i found that taking my scalpel and cutting a small fragment of gill and then sitting that on the plate was the easiest okay. way to get a clone because if i see you know super aggressive growth coming right out the gate i know that that's right most likely clone mycelium so you know, that's, that's one way to get one, um, and spores at the same time. If you leave it, let it sit there long enough. Right. But, uh, yeah, I never even thought about that. I mean, there would theoretically be so many spores on there. There's no way that shit wouldn't eventually yeah, germinate shout, just by setting it there. Shout out to my buddy, Chuck Doc. <laughs> oh, that's Chuck. Teach me that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good trick. And I know Chuck picked up a lot of that stuff from, from Dave. He's got all these little tricks, mm -hmm. these little agar work tricks that people in the, uh, some of the OGs in the TAT syndicate of shared with him and he blessed nice. my game by sharing them with me. That little whole swab the leading edge thing. Uh -huh. That was Chuck. Nice. Yep. Yeah, Chuck's good people. He uh he was also one of my early nice, you know, would talk to me guys on Instagram. I got it, man, I started on uh Facebook, but I had to get off there, man. That shit was toxic. Uh, no offense to people that mostly mess with uh, Facebook. Um, but yeah, uh, I found Instagram a little more friendliness, a little more uh, sharing some information and DMs. But of course, you know, I and I am always trying to get you to spend more time on Discord because uh, I, I, I know I got to I got to get into Discord. it. I don't know why I'm not. I don't it's I guess... just takes a while to get used to it. Creature of habit. That's what it is. Up. Oh, all right. Got a question. Wardrobe mycology. What do you mean by swab the leading edge? Okay, so on uh, an agar plate, if you have mycelium that has grown uh, like all the way out to the edge, mm -hmm. say you wanted to make liquid culture. Ideally, you don't want any of that shit that's touching the side of the plate. That's where your cloudiness and your contamination, that's where it's going to come from. Yep. But that is your leading edge. That's a, you. You kind of do want it. Mm -hmm. So when you say you scraped the plate minus that for your liquid culture and all you're left with is that 
you can take a sterile swab, drag it around the edge of the plate, pick up every single one of those ropes, okay, and just drop it on a new plate and let it run. Oh, yeah. And, Interesting. Uh, yeah, so you don't ever waste the leading edge. Good, yeah, man, I tell you what, uh, that's the... Uh, when I talk to newbies a lot, I'm always like, yeah, dude, you know, you want to do that transfer before you, you get to the edge. Because the minute why... it's at the edge, it, it, you know, you're worrying about contamination. That's why and, I fuck uh, with those uh, 60 millimeter plates, too. They make you do the work you're when right. you're supposed to be doing the work because they're smaller. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hold on, I think we missed a little something here that I might or might not want to catch up on. All right, I'm. No, we don't. Okay, we don't need to get into that. There, <laughs> you know, lot lot of politics going on in Oregon right now. Oh yeah. Uh, uh ho hopefully it, it it turns out to benefit people like us who actually truly love mycology and and all that stuff. Yeah. So, um, with the, with the pan cyan, yeah, I let's, can't, let's do it. Okay. So the first time I grew them, it was complicated. It was in a tent. It was in a Martha in a tent. Okay. <laughs> with, you had a with tent a within a tent. A tent within a tent with a fogger, a mister. Uh, I had the big tent. The, the vent was air exchanging the small tent. At the same time, it was it was crazy. It was overcomplicated. But I got pins. And just as fast as I got pins, I got Tritch. Oh. Didn't I didn't clean my fogger. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, as soon as I switched from misting to fogging after the pins, I just fogged it with Tritch right. <laughs> immediately. So I learned my lesson. Yeah. Uh, hydrogen peroxide in, in okay. the uh, humidifier. That's yep, that works. You can also, there's a product you can buy for it. I use it in my humidifier as well. But yeah, you got to do something. Otherwise, you're likely going to be. Yeah, I got caught. Out. I got I got caught sleeping then. So um, I, you know, after talking to some, uh, some other people um, that were experimenting with pans, like I had I had been kind of, I thought that that was the way that was the only way to do it. Cause, right. uh, every other time I had not been fruitful before then. Um, but now I'm finding as long as you have a full understanding about what they need to thrive, you can take the fuck around method, okay. <laughs> which cue the picture. This is what I'm doing now. I'm not monitoring anything. I have a shotgun chamber with my trays in it and then i've got one ceramic heat bulb like a couple shelves below Wait, it did you send me this picture i think so of the pans oh, i don't know did i hold on if not i can let let me pull it up on instagram okay anyways it's 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 just one of those regular metal racks and i just put my shotgun chamber on the top with a couple jars of water inside of it with my open pan trays and it is keeping it humid, like 94% humidity, and uh, they're happy as can be. I don't have to mist. I don't have to fan anything, they, and they pinned hard. So you're just, you just in that same chamber, you just have a tray of water? Two quart-sized mason jars with the lid off. A mason jars, okay. Yeah, and then uh, that little ceramic heat bulb a couple shelves below. It mm -hmm. heats up the bottom just enough to make it humid in there because it warms up that water that's in there Okay. without um, directly heating the cakes because that's what you don't want is direct right. heat, like a heating pad, a heating mat, because mm -hmm. then you're, you're cooking the cake at that point. All you right. Wanna... All I can... Let me see if I can find it. I have a picture, uh, Orange Mini. So I, I those, that one. those were weird. Um, but I'm, those, I'm trying to find you. Do you remember? Uh, I just, I just posted it on my page. It was Pan, Cyan, Cambo, Goliath. I posted some pictures. Okay. Hold on. Um, Here we go. Okay. Let me pull this up. 
So I just used those aluminum trays, you know, like uh, they do for the, uh, whatchamacallit, Gordo Tech. He, you know, they use those sure. aluminum trays. Uh, yeah. But his tech takes up a whole room. It's sweet tech. I like mm-hmm. it. But if you don't have the space for it, not practical. Right. Um, and, and it's got to be a space that you feel is pretty clean. But these were just, these pinned pretty hard and they, I didn't do anything. I didn't have to miss them or nothing. Hmm. Um, and a lot of that's genetics. I, I, I'm still experimenting. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of bouncing my ideas off of somebody that is doing some major fuck around stuff with these themselves. Right. And, and they, uh, they're kind of giving me the rundown here. That's Lake Toba. Um, yeah, I, you should... yeah, I don't know. I can't find it. Okay, well, so but a, basically, big, you're using big... a sm- small ceramic bulb, a couple jars of water, yeah, and, and that's, that's providing enough humidity. That's interesting. Yeah, in this shotgun chamber, it's like a ninety quart tub with holes mm-hmm. drilled. I got uh, holes like every two inches, okay. uh, like three, three row, three or four rows high, all the way around the tub, and I put micro pour tape over all the holes to start. Okay. And it got the humidity way up and, and I got it to pin without removing any of the micro pore. Um, and after it pinned, they were looking like they needed some fresh air exchange. And if, you know, I just started pulling a few pieces off here, a few pieces off there. And I'd come back a couple hours later and it was like instantly, uh, I could tell if they were happier or not right? because of what I did. Cause they'll abort fast. If they're not happy, they will abort fast. They'll oh. let you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I haven't grown them yet. I'm I'm hoping to give them a try. This is gonna my, be my year of not so, Benzos. So, so it's, I gotta try. It's a little frustrating. Like the first run I just did with those orange meanies, they were so skinny. I harvested a full freaking tray, and it dried out to a gram. Wow. Right. They were so tiny. I was like, what the heck is this? Uh, what is this shit? So I ran the Goliaths. Still small. Smaller than some pans. A lot mm-hmm. of pans. But, man, were they strong. And it flushed way nicer for me. I wound up with nine grams dry oh, nice. <laughs> from that pan. Yeah, from that tray. So um, nine grams dry of pans is like fucking 35 grams dry of cubes at least it's something like that it's ridiculous yeah i've never had them i'm uh dude i had just the other day (laughs) two size double zeros microdose capsules with pans and that's all it took i fucked off most of the day wow impressive (laughs) yeah yeah i mean i've I've heard guys that once they have them they don't want anything else it yeah. it is nice. It is not. I don't know. I was standing there doing something, and the next thing I know, it was like I was upside down on the ceiling, looking down at the floor, and I was like, "What the world is going on?" It was the craziest feeling, and then it just went away, and it was like, "What?" I know it was the weirdest vertigo I've ever had. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Uh, so got a question from, uh, Jen. I think this goes along with like talking about Chuck and s- some other guys, uh, underrated, uh, genetics guys that, that you, you want to shout out and maybe talk um, about. If you're into pans, uh, on Instagram, his name is uh, discernible designs. He's doing some really cool stuff with this pan NVTX, uh, that he's got it's uh south mm-hmm. texas gulf pan cyan and they okay. get pretty big and he is fruiting them every which way straight dung substrate um just some sometimes he's blending it what he's done he took knocked up patties and just sat them there was a fully inoculated cow patty and he just sat it in a tub of straight nice. manure substrate and a few days later, mushrooms are popping out from underneath the patty all around it. And, you know, the mycelium is moving and mm-hmm. it, it's a beautiful thing. It's just trying to, these things, they like as close to outdoor 
in, in, yeah. environment as you can give them, you know? Uh, yeah. That's what I found with the uh, Natalensis was uh, they want so much, they need the humidity, but they, they want the air exchange. And that's not just like a little but, fanning. But, they want like real air exchange. No, no, but you saw, but you saw wardrobes, Natalensis grow in the dome. That's true. I'm telling you, it killed it because the he dome did. self-regulate. Yeah, I got to try the dome. No air exchange needed. None. <laughs> got to try them. Yeah, yeah. I just thought he got lucky. I didn't. No, I not even. I'm still I'm, convinced I'm I need more fresh pans. air. I'm trying pans in them because pans need a lot of fresh air. So right. why the hell wouldn't they work in that? You know? You're right. Why not? That's, Maybe domes I, are going to be the new bags, man. They're just not practical because you can't stack them. You got to have room to lay them out. Yeah. So for a, a scale operation, the domes aren't really right. practical. But if you're at home and you're just trying to have something cool to look at all day, right. the dome grows are really neat to look at. And, and watch Yeah, them. I mean, you just need more shelves, right? That's You just need a lot uh, Yeah, of I mean, shelves, and they're kind of long. The seedling trays are like long and weird shaped and yeah oh he just said he's got a a killer natalensis yeah i don't doubt it <laughs> right now in a larger dome damn you wardrobe mycology well our swabs are on the way geeky <laughs> okay yeah he's, he sent us those swabs we got those yeah yeah thank he, you uh, thank you by the way <laughs> yeah, he's he's a good guy yeah that um that gets me to thinking about um, how much trading do you still do? Do you, uh, got, do you got like your core group of people you still do some trades with? Okay, so when I when I'm on when I'm on IG, I like watch other people that post their grows and like mm -hmm. you can tell who's putting in the work and right. trusting the process and and who's not because you just you just watch it happen and the people that are doing that those are the people that i tend to like reach out to and right you know uh either you like I'll, the fuck around and find outers yeah yeah mm -hmm. I'll, exactly exactly like i'll see something that they're doing that i like and i'll be like oh man i would love a swab of that like yeah you know and then we just trade and then I put extras in there and then I'm like, oh, grow this shit out. Tell me what it looks like. Send me back a clone plate and a swab. <laughs> you know, like let them, that's how, that's how uh, I do my recombination stuff. Cause I had so many plates. Once I slung all that mycelium out of the liquid and onto the agar, I had so many different plates that I was like, man, I You're can't. You're like, I can't. Unless I run like Dave, I can't fruit all these. Right. So, um, I just sent them to a couple of different people and had them run them. They had different results with the same, same stuff, mm -hmm. even different results than me. All three of us had different results. The only ones that I really liked were that, uh, psychedelics life, uh, his results from that last yeah. one. Uh, nice. Um, all right. Where are we at here? Mr. Hideous wants to know, uh, what kind of domes are we referring to? It's basically like a propagation, a seed trace, propagation right? With, dome. Yeah. Yep. There's, there's a bunch of, maybe I'll, I'll put some links. Uh, God, I wish I had my shit together. I'd put an affiliate link and make one cent for every one that you guys bought, but that's fine. I, I'll, I'll put a link up there and, uh, show you some that, that I know these guys are using, but pretty much from the sounds of it, anything you just, you want a flat tray. You don't want like a bunch of wells necessarily. Yeah. Um, so usually they come with like inserts for the okay. seed propagation. You just pull the inserts out. And just and run it's just it the try. regular bottom. Okay. Yep. They're cool. about this. They're about this thick. Nice. There we go. Right. Sorry, I got when I scroll down, then I I have to take there. Okay. Cool. All right. So, um, have you ever done cereal dilution? Yeah. Yeah. And, too Mixed much results. work you still like uh well i i did serial dilution after i bought my microscope because mm -hmm. you know it's the name of the game right uh and as far as isolating <laughs> what one is aiming to isolate under the microscope i never really like 
had much success doing mm-hmm. that um with the with the liquid cereal dilutions now like with the spore swab type of cereal dilution uh-huh. i like that technique just because swabs are easy that's easy right. why make your life harder when you can make it easier 100 percent. 100 percent. yeah the uh, uh my buddy ed he did a, a get he calls it a ghetto dilution and he, he just <laughs> scrapes the teeniest little bit you know with a razor a sterile razor blade off of a spore print puts it in some sterile water shakes the living bejesus out of it you know like a fairly large jar so you're you're, you're doing your what's probably the equivalent of three dilutions just just right out of the gate and um he says that you know sometimes it sometimes it's too many spores but a lot of times it works so yeah, I, yeah. i'm all about figuring out any way to make things more simple for sure yeah. especially for most people people can't buy 50 different things to 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 be super pro and so one know. technique that i also did for the cereal dilution that i noticed gave me a super low spore count in my solution right off the bat mm-hmm. was taking the cotton from the swab okay cutting it off putting it in sterile water and mm-hmm. agitating the hell out of it and then sampling from that rather than scraping right. a print and most of it stays stuck in that cotton but a few oh, yeah, a lot so of it some of it off of some it. of it comes out and then you can do accordingly i swear to god i took like i took a pipette and maybe did like two two transfers mm-hmm. and it, i got down to like where i could see two or three spores underneath the microscope i bet you could even just stick it in there and swirl it a little bit and, you could but like yeah, well, but i i had a, a a vortex mixer so i just oh, put okay. it in the test tube on the and, and then that was nice. it yeah yeah i have uh I, I bought all the little little fancy gear to do it and i just i keep i don't have enough time in the day, man. That the, the kids keep me busy. The that yeah. I have have a little job hiccup right now. But once that all gets figured out, I'm hoping before Christmas I can I can get some some projects going. Oh, well, and then that's, that's the goal. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, water agar is is another useful tool for spore propagation. Just water and agar, no nutrients, okay. um, for germination of spores and all that. Because the idea being only the strong are going to be the ones that are able to oh. propagate and do their thing without the nutrients. Right. You don't want to overfeed uh, the the weaklings. Right. Right. Okay. That's um, cool. And then you transfer away from the water agar. Uh, and also it, with a, a dunk, a swab dunk, you dunk that in water agar. If it's a contaminated swab and you've gotten nothing but tam plate after tam plate after tam plate when you streak go to water agar with it and dunk it and let the mycelium run. And then you just pick it up and drop those ropes on a new plate. Interesting. I like that. Yeah. Of course, uh, Tim just said, you mean water (laughs) gel instead of water agar? Yeah. Yeah, Okay. I bought the wrong of of gel my -hmm. first time using it. Oh, Let the, the sour... like low acto versus high acto. I bought... yeah. Yes, yes, I'm the wrong mm-hmm. kind because nobody told me. I was like, let me try this shit out. Mm-hmm. And uh, left a sour taste in my mouth. I like the agar. I don't need my stuff to be super clear. That doesn't matter. I need it to be functional. I'm sure. not picky. I don't think the mycelium's picky either. It's not. I mean, we spend a lot of time talking about what grain and what agar recipe it doesn't even mind having to chew its food you like if grain is under hydrated if as long as it's not too dry mycelium will tear through it anyways it doesn't care it does especially good genetics will but yeah i like that trick of uh making your spores work yeah that's how i won't thought about survival of the fittest it's the same same yep theory it's a good one yeah um all right, tell me, uh, tell me some stories. I want to hear either some trip stories or um, any any mushroom cultivation hilarious situations you've been in. You know, uh, things you tried. You know, you fucked oh. around and you found out yeah. shit you didn't want to find out or okay, don't, something like that. Don't don't try to pasteurize manure based substrate 
inside in your house. <laughs> don't do that. I don't think I would have made this well, mistake. But well, well, I had a mushroom bag with some manure sub in it, and I threw a zip tie around that son of a bitch and dropped it in a pot of boiling water for two hours. Walked away, came back. My house oh just my God. stunk like open ass. I mean, like I bet it did. <laughs> yeah. So don't do that. Vacuum seal it. If you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna boil it inside, throw it in a vac bag and just boil it. Something like that's, that. That's that's a mistake you make one time. Yeah. 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 I find well, I, I'm saying boil, but I mean like, you know, one fifty. Right. One sixty. Uh but in now, in a hot pot of water. That's how I pasteurize. Are you still rocking uh like a twenty three quart presto? Do yeah. you Yeah, I've got yeah. I've got multiple of those. Um only thing is you gotta change the rings all the time. As much as I use them, gotta stay on yeah. top of that. I'm having issues currently at the moment and I'm waiting on the new ones to show up. Yeah. Amazon to... lately has been uh, a little tricky for me. I don't know about for you. Things yeah. are not coming quite as quickly as they used to. Yeah, that's true. I, yeah, that's true. What are we going to do? Yeah. Um. So, so uh, you're still working stormtroopers in, yeah. in crosses and stuff like that. And, uh, and working on Pantech. Um, I'm trying to dumb down Pantech as much okay. as possible. That's my that's my goal, to be able to fruit pans without having to pamper them. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Cute. I like that. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of these. I'm like, man, I don't. Maybe I don't. I'm not set up for it. Uh, I read Gordo Tech and um, been trying to get him to come on the show. And you need a lot of space for it. It's a great. Yeah, right you need it. There's a, a little bit to it. It's sure. mimi- it's mimicking, basically outdoor Florida weather. <laughs> it's, right. it's all this mimicking. Uh, or you just moved to Florida for a summer and you just do a bunch of outdoor grows and with cow patties and you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I just had a. Uh, Bat guano seems a little extra. Yeah. Like Schneider. I, uh-huh. Where does where does one acquire bat guano? I don't well from bats, some, but some Ace Ventura, you... some Ace Ventura stuff right there. Yes, know. for sure. <laughs> See, guys, he's that popular. He's getting orders while he's on the podcast. <laughs> uh, spam um, risk, spam risk. Somebody trying to cover my student loans. <laughs> of course. Don't even get me started about that. Um. <laughs> So yeah, what uh big Mike dream? What in the next year? What what are you hoping to uh to accomplish? Do you have uh you know five year goals, one year goal, ten year goal? What um, what do you set your sights on? You know, I'm just trying to make it. <laughs> I'm just yeah, trying. Yeah. I'm just yeah. I'm just trying to make it. And and I, right now, I'm, I feel really good about what I do, and uh. It, it feels rewarding and for me it's like what you know what's what's next this whole this whole industry it, it's what it's going to become like cannabis yeah. did it, in the next few years it's kind of inevitable it's sneaking up on us it's kind of if you want to be in the game <laughs> you gotta have your foot in the door already right that's that's it, then what it's going to boil down to like now for uh you know, little mom and pop bud growers times is hard. Correct. <laughs> but you built, so you do one thing, uh, extremely well that I didn't, when I first started learning, I would ask people questions and nobody wanted to really just straight up answer the question or they wanted to be obtuse about it or they wanted to, you know, or just straight up ignore me. And, uh, you, have a long track record of not only being a vendor who sells quality genetics, but from what I've heard through the grapevine, you are very, and in my experience as well, you are very willing to take the time to talk to people. And especially, I think you can correct me if I'm wrong here. um, If you have a student that seems truly eager and interested in learning about, uh, mycology you really seem to take the time to to help teach them um yeah. which is is pretty rare and pretty awesome that you do that well 
You get am I am I right? I mean, I yeah, I mean, like I, I definitely based on I, things I've heard. I definitely try to answer everybody's questions. Part of my uh, part of my thing is my customer service and uh-huh. uh, accessibility to customers. I mean, yeah. keep everybody happy and makes me less uh, of a nervous wreck when I don't have a bunch of emails telling me I did something wrong. Right. <laughs> yep. I got a couple people here in the chat echoing. Uh, Paul says, uh, Dirty South was the first to walk me through the whole, the whole process. And then Kenny, uh, what up here said, yep. Sp- Dirty spent plenty of time talking to me, uh, and answering I'm, many questions. I couldn't agree more, man. He was one of the first to really, uh, be an actual Michael friend to me. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Okay, I guess someone uh, is doing the research for us here on uh, bat guano. It adds nitrogen, small amounts of calcium, potassium, and phosphorus, trace amounts of transition metals. Cool, so man. The, so the azomite, I use azomite instead, instead of the manure to achieve the same That's effect true. as if I used the manure. Right. Um, Especially it, after your, your traumatic... Uh, well, well <laughs> the azomite... Story. Yeah, the the azomite is not giving any readily available nutrients to contamination because it's a rock right. powder. But the mycelium can utilize it. Still it. likes it, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, and it yes. makes it aggressive. So that's that's why I like that. I have way less contamination issues in my sub. It's probably right. got to do with my pasteurization tech. I just like to throw it in the pot and boil it and come back a couple hours later. It works really great with that azomite recipe, but with the manure yeah. recipe, I got to be more careful. Yeah, he also said azomite adds everything. Yes, I think I've so seen the ingredients r- list, and it's it, it literally is quite extensive. It's literally a rare uh, uh, stone or, or whatever that is yeah. only harvested in like Utah or something like that. Mm. There's one mine in the in middle America. And it is just chock full. It's like volcanic it's rock, old, old volcanic rock, just full of nutrients. Hmm. A bag, a bag of that shit. And a, a, some, an acquaintance of mine that lives in Colombia, I tried to tell him, "Oh, you need to get some of that." I didn't realize it's rare. He get it? No, he could, he could. Oh. But a bag that cost me thirty dollars cost him like almost, almost. It was like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Wow. It was a lot of money. It was a lot of money for a bag of rock dust. Now, so uh, Echo286 wants to know, how much uh, are you using then in, in a bucket so, tech? So for, for one brick of cocoa, I used to use two handfuls of gypsum. Well, when I dropped the gypsum and swapped it out, now I use the same amount, but azomite. So I just two small handfuls of that. If I want to add the calcium carbonate, uh, I do a handful of each. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, and the the calcium carbonate, uh, all that just really kind of helps bring down the uh, acidity of yes. your. Um, cool. It's like, uh, yeah, I I have never messed too much with with that other than uh, I just figure, I, and I know you said you you just stopped using the gypsum, um, but I've been there using has no. The, nutritional value at all it's i'm, I'm still using it it makes me feel good man just let me use it no okay. isn't it powdered drywall essentially yeah i mean i use it that <laughs> and um in the gardener's lime just to to buffer any ph imbalance well the lime you know, the, there, yeah the lime yeah but but Washed the azimite might might, might be doing that that for me as well um tip of the cap just said so azomite bone meal, CAC, what is CACO3? Calcium co- carbonate, is that what you were just talking about? And then yeah. uric acid. Sorry, my chemistry is a little it, it depends on the size of your of your hands. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> me. Right, yeah, a handful is like a cup. Again, For man, me, he, it's a Neanderthal, he, he already just said that he doesn't measure shit out. So he's, just give it a try. Yeah try a handful yep i mean i 
Like I'm telling you, the first first time I read a sub tech was shroomery, and it's like the bucket tech. They're like one brick of cocoa gets mm-hmm. two handfuls of gypsum, right. a, like a couple quarts of uh, vermiculite or a quart of vermiculite, and then four quarts of water. That's what it is, mm-hmm. something like that. It's super basic. Um, yeah, and back in the just, day, they used to measure shit by like how many hands yeah, tall yeah, you yeah. were. Yeah, you know, you want to mix up, you want to mix up pan sub. It's like fill up an aluminum tray halfway with right. uh, vermiculite and then throw in the straw and then do this and yep. it's no no real measuring i mean at the end of the day from talking to a lot of people and also trying a lot of things i can say that there are there's so many different ways to ultimately grow some mushrooms and uh for <laughs> me i love trying a lot of different things i i have definitely succeeded in various capacities doing different things, but it's part of what makes it exciting and fun for me is to try different things. And it helps me form a better relationship with varieties. I really like to grow and it's it's really that fucking fuck around and find out uh, religion, right? Like some, I I know you're this way. Uh, I really enjoy fucking around and finding out. It's just fun. Yeah. Um, Brett, no. Uh, I don't necessarily think my results would improve if I measured, but maybe they'd be more consistent. Yeah. Um, but not, not that they're not consistent. I feel like when they're not, though, it's because I didn't run a liner. <laughs> I usually, I'm usually like full flush club all day, and then, I, and then every now and then it's like that one. <laughs> Lake Lake Toba just did it to me real bad. Uh, yeah. It's hard sometimes, it's just life. You're like, God, uh, you know, to... whether you ran out of trash bags or you are got to hurry up and go take your kids somewhere, you're like, okay, I guess this tub's not getting a liner today. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> for replication of production. So I find that as long as my substrate to grain ratio remains the same, I don't have very much variation in what... Um, goes on as far as production you kind of once you run a culture or for me once i run a culture and i know how it's gonna perform i can kind of just keep doing that like one to 1.5 grain ratio and it just kills it for me that's Mm. that's the sweet spot and um yeah now has anyone so okay i know tim tim might have been one of the first people to know i think actually john um of uh, Dr. Mike was the first to talk to me about uh, humic acid was well, either Tim or him, or they were talking to me about it at about the same time. But now uh, PGT wants to know, what do you think about using fulvic acid for additional? I've never used it. I don't know anything. About I don't it. even know what the difference is. That's I do a- not either. <laughs> oh, here we go. Tim, Tim for the save. Uh, oh, fulvic and humic have good results and agar haven't tried in substrate. Okay. Yeah, so. Y'all got more acid than me, man. I, <laughs> if I have acid, it's usually just one kind. So, <clears throat> so I think sub has, well, if it has to be properly hydrated, like that's mushrooms are 90% water. If your genetics are great and your shit is hydrated and your ratio is right, you're going to be full flush club all day. All day. That's, I agree that's with just that. what it boils down to. Um, yeah. Now, I think he's getting at, um, you know, if you're running straight CV versus adding the azomite, adding, you know, a couple other uh, amendments, yeah. are you getting bigger flushes? I have not seen bigger flushes. Um, I have seen some anecdotal evidence to suggest maybe potency goes up a touch. Um, I'll buy into that, you know. I, I'll, I'll believe amazing. that. Um, but for me, it's the colonization time. And uh, man, my, my stuff has flushed a lot harder since adding that azomite. Uh, oh, just, okay. Yeah, it has flushed a lot harder. It looked nicer and all that. All right. I'm going to have to try it. Yep. I got to go on Amazon and see how much it's going to cost me. I think I looked one time and I was like, damn, that's a tiny ass bag for what I, what I need. But it's like this is pretty is big. Okay. Yeah, it's nice. It's okay. Cool. I'm going to have to try it. As long as you're not prepping bulk. Like, <laughs> yeah, 
I'm not, man. <laughs> it's, it's just no. me. See, I like just I'm, can't I'm stop boiling doing these I'm, things. I'm, I boil like two or three bags of sub at a time, <laughs> and then when they're right. done, boil the next two or three, and then yeah. that's usually all I need for that run. All right, here's a quick yeah. follow up. I don't even know what fulvic acid is, but Tim said I think fulvic didn't change my pH hmm. as bad, or vice versa. The human oh, so okay, one of them didn't have as much of an effect. Now, I don't even know why. I don't know if you're just using it to make it more acidic or if there's some other well, ultimate I know, benefit. I know if you hydrate your sub with like pH adjusted water and mm -hmm. you get the pH of your sub to be about like eight, like seven point mm -hmm. seven point five. No, 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 like eight is is pretty good to where it contams most of the time. Don't won't like even try to mess with it because okay. it's hostile to them. But the mycelium doesn't mind. Yeah. Interesting. I think I read something about that, but then I never followed through so, on so if trying to mess with it. If you're going to case with like a true casing layer, if you're going to use, say, like Jiffy Seed Starter Mix, that's a good casing, basic, okay. old school, old school casing tech. Um, just hydrate it with, uh, you know, the pH adjusted water. And, Interesting. And that's your layer of protection right there. So do do you case? I used to uh, pseudo case. case, and I I don't in my bag grows anymore. Okay, so I I always pseudo case. I've never cased in a bag, um, but uh, sometimes sometimes I forget to set back that extra little bit of sub for the pseudo casing, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, I'll let it. I I don't I don't really have issues letting it go with without anything with pseudo mm -hmm. or or casing. Just let it ride. Uh, as long as long as I can kind of make sure that the grains aren't showing too bad, right? It's fine. Um, but certain yeah, and I got better at not you know touching my my tubs. Yeah, that helped I, too. And I I thought that it was certain varieties specifically that required casings, but I'm finding that that's not even necessarily the truth. I certain agree. isolations of certain varieties are going to require casings. I just was gifted a, an ape culture. Mm -hmm. My ape needs a casing. It won't do anything okay. nice without a casing. This ape, no casing, loves bags, loves tubs, kills it. Takes hmm. twenty takes twenty one days to produce a single pin. <laughs> at, at day twenty one, you start seeing the pins, and then it's just boom, hmm. no casing. Yeah, boom there's a lot. Um, yeah, I think I think we're all missing the boat. I mean, of of course, who wants to? keep a laboratory notebook and, and write exhaustive uh, observational notes about everything. But I definitely think if somehow somebody, I don't know. So, if you're, be... so if, if you're growing a culture out and you're seeing a shitload of blobs, that mm -hmm. tells me you should have cased that right. culture sure. is yeah. asking you for a casing at that yes. point. So you should listen. <laughs> yeah, Give it one. I agree. That's like yeah. a, Penis envy will mutate and blob the the newer one mm -hmm. if you don't case it. But I'm I'm with you. I've I've grown things that I was told had to have casing layers, and I I don't agree. It's I like isolation have. specific. Maybe maybe right. like maybe as a, maybe as a whole, most apes need a casing. Mm -hmm. You know, but not all. Yeah, but not all. I exactly. surprised it surprised me. <laughs> Now, I like you. I like pseudo casing mostly just because I do the thinnest, the absolute thinnest amount of sub I can do above it just to not have exposed grain. Right. Right. The, the pseudo casing is great for cubes. I find um, I don't really require a true casing with cubes ever, but the true casing, um, which Jiffy is not quite a true casing because it's sphagnum cocoa and vermiculite but it's mostly okay. or peat uh, cocoa peat. and vermiculite yeah. but it's 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 mostly peat which is uh not uh nutritional or whatever right um the cocoa is the only thing in there that's slightly nutritious so you use that on um exotics you don't get overlay i tried to case those mm -hmm. pan cambo goliaths with just straight cocoa and vermiculite and it just ate it up uh oh, okay. and i had all this overlay and it, it still managed to fruit pretty heavy but after i harvested that first flush there was metabolites everywhere it was oh. ugly looking so i cased it for the second flush now they're coming in they're a little bit thicker you know looking good interesting 
Yeah, I wish I did it right on the first blush, but we'll get it next time. Yeah, so uh, PGT just said, I've logged my ape recently, just pseudo-cased, spawned on 9-1, pinned at 13, harvest Ooh. at 20, 64 grams dry. Okay, I like that. That's a Sounds fast, good. that's a that's a fast Yeah, that is super fast, ape. man. Is it, is it open or closed cap? That's the question. Closed cap ape? Hmm? We'll find out. Give okay, some we'll find out. To... Yeah, I'm I have not never a, had not a fan a, an of ape open. that that fast. That's that's pretty fast. Not a fan of the open cap apes. No, the ape the right. ape two two ones and stuff like uh -huh. that. It's not ape. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it is not. It is not. From what I, I've never grown them. They look cool, but I've heard. Oh yeah, he says open cap ape. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I've also heard that the two two one is not terribly potent. It's definitely not potent it's, like a traditional ape is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I when I when I think of the perfect ape, it's like some dumpy little bowling pin. <laughs> it's a bowling pin. It's a yeah. dumpy little bowling pin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know what Tim means by this, but he said temps. Just yeah. So, so what? What? Where do you like to keep your temperature? I know you're down so, south, so, so it's probably warmer cubes, than me. Yeah, for cubes, I I mean I'm right around room temp. Uh. 70 73 uh okay. for i don't i don't incubate my grains or anything like that mm -hmm. um uh the only thing that i monitor the temperature on is the pans and that's like a loose loosely monitor the temperature um they like anywhere from high 70s to like mid to low 80s more, oh, more wow. like yeah like, okay so you yeah. really are trying to mimic more of an outdoor yeah right vibe okay. right the inside of that shotgun chamber is so is warm it's okay. warm just from all that evaporate it's just hot and sticky right. it's like going to floor it's like disney world in july right. <laughs> that's the best place to grow pants guys just yeah. go to disneyland <laughs> or disney world yeah don't go to disneyland It'll be too dry there yeah interesting yeah but, uh... yeah i I'm also usually trying to keep it about 73 I, I, for most everything that seems to be good, safe. 73 to 74. Yep. Seems to work uh, out the best. The pans, the pans will roll like you can do 80 all the way through with the pans and they'll be happy. But I think if you start out at, at 82 for colonization and then when you induce fruiting, try to drop it to 80, that'll trigger pinning as well. Mm, okay. Uh, do you run, uh, lights with domes? I'm my, assuming my opinion on lights is that Let's they do dick. They do jack all. I, I don't use lights at all. I could grow okay. my shit. Yeah. At all. Not really. Nothing other than ambient room light. I forget who, who was telling me about this. It might've been Tim actually, or Tim or, uh, Dr. Mike was saying that there was a recent study out that said that, um, Potency was actually improved by minimizing light exposure. That that yeah, maybe yeah. it needed a touch of light to trigger the pinning, but only needed to do that for that initial pinning process. It's the evaporation that triggers the pinning. So that's all in your right. fresh air exchange. And for me, it's whenever I start seeing the primordia, if it's an unmodified tub, that's when I start fanning that bitch mm -hmm. when you see the primordia. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, if you just look at how mushrooms grow in nature, right? You, you have a heavy rain, and then the cool front, you know, yeah, and then they and pop, warm front they pop out, and... they pop out from under the leaf casing, and then exactly, yeah. yeah, and it's definitely that was one of my first epiphanal. Might even been you who first got me thinking about this, but really, truly, growing mushrooms is about starting with the right stuff, which is some water and some spawn. Mm -hmm. And just triggering a slow evaporative process to ultimately, you know, you, you go from your primordia, your hyphal growth, your primordia, your yep. pin set, and you just keep that going. Well, not completely drying your cake out, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, All right. So here, I think we've sort of gone over it. Um, you were saying a 650 brick of cocoa. And a hand, a couple handfuls of the azomite, is that right? Yeah, a couple small handfuls, not like heaping handfuls. Okay. Cool, man. All right. Lights. Uh so so we're we're no on lights, we're yes on azomite. I mean I, um 
I don't think lights are necessary. Like mushrooms don't use light mm -hmm. for energy in any capacity. Right. They yeah, don't. They, they don't. just don't. So um, the, if anything, they use it. People speculated it was for directionality, but they don't even use it for that. They've been yeah, around longer than we. Movement. They've been around longer than we have. They know what gravity is. They get how mm -hmm. it works. They know which way is up. Right. You know. Um, th well, I've I've had some. I, some yeah, yeah. That don't now that I say that. <laughs> now that I say that, I've had some grow upside down with the cap in the substrate. Yes, I had my first one of those. Finally, it was truly <laughs> an upside down fruit, man. It was so cool. I was very happy. Yeah. Um, the other thing light could do, though, is if at night, you know, you have a rain and then the sun comes out, the sun is also then part of the evaporative process. So it's the it might have more yeah, to do with that. Thermo that. thermodynamics <laughs> might might be more that. Yes. Um, because direct sunlight, that'll, that'll kill fungi most of the time. Yeah. Um, now, I will say this, and I used to think, and this this kind of goes along with what we're talking about. I did, at one point in time, have a stack of tubs, uh, growing some stuff out, and <clears throat> there was only one window in the room. And the side that was facing the window everything had growing fruits. that way. But but of course I had bigger fruits because better evaporative process where where the sun was shining on it probably had absolutely nothing to actually do with the light. Sure. Sure. I think. Um, I think it's the heat. That's my yeah. theory. It's 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 the warmth from the light. It's it's warming the ambient air temperature around the cake without warming the cake. Because yep. if the cake is the same temp as the air, you're going to have contamination issues. If yep. uh, you're going to have big time contamination. Now, speaking of that, man, I started sterilizing my substrate and knock on wood. I don't even remember what contamination is, man. Well, I have you not had any. You effect. started removing variables. That tells you that your pasteurization tech was off. That could be. Sure. Maybe. If, I don't know. If pasteurizing wasn't was work, if pasteurizing wasn't work and sterilizing was. Sterilizing that's, that's is it. definitely working for me. It, it, for me, I'm not, you know, I'm not growing in bulk. If you're I'm doing for manure, myself, I, I, doing manure, it's like a six hour pasture. It's like a long, slow yeah, pasteurization to be I'm successful with that. Yeah. You know? I, I have, it's manure has not been worth the time for me. I've, I tried to, I, I tried to pasteurize some whole cow patties recently. And okay. um, <laughs> this is what we do at my house. Not field aged. And, uh, or we're talking. No, no, they were dry. Time? They were dry okay. field aged whole cow patties that I was okay. sent in the mail. Yes, I paid for this. Wow. Okay. I know. Um, <laughs> I would love to be the postal inspector that, that yeah. opens that box up. So I, I soaked them for uh, about an hour in water. Mm -hmm. And then I just piled them on in a mushroom bag and threw them in the pot of boiling water and just was going to let it go. And my normal, uh, the way I do it is for that field age prepped, you know, kind of like broken up manure is like mm -hmm. a couple couple hours is enough um it's not the case i got sprouts right. i got sprouts coming out of these foods you did <laughs> i got sprouts i got green stuff I to, i'm repasteurizing it right now <laughs> wow yeah um so pgt doesn't live too far away from me that's that's why i'm gonna pull this up uh, cause man, I'm stepping in, uh, deer scat left and right oh, right now as I'm trying my to pick up my too. leaves. I, I wonder, I wonder if cubes would like deer scat. I don't know. I know they like cow poop, but it'd be worth trying. You, that'll be a video guys. We, we can watch that video and, and I think see what he finds. Cow, cow poo and deer poo, very different consistencies. Cows have four yeah. stomachs. The shit basically comes out the same way it went in. Right. Yeah. Just a little uglier. <laughs> yeah but the pellets are nice i mean if that would work out that'd be yeah nice. yeah if, if that's what you're into <laughs> yeah i can't i just every time i've had a bag of poo sub it has not worked out for me i'm just not i i can't i've it. i've heard great things about using rabbit poop uh oh really go light yes someone uh someone that i spoke to they lived very close to some uh prominent rabbit breeder <laughs> and they just had a ton of rabbits mm -hmm. and they started incorporating that shit into their sub and it was 
Nice. I liked it. Yeah, it oh. worked out good. Oh, that must be why like uh the the tortoise dung is is so popular cuz oh, I mean, so... I just feels good helping a turtle. <laughs> right. Feels good to help a tortoise. Mm-hmm. They're so slow. Uh, they are. They're so slow. They need all the help they can get. Hey, but they they're slow and they live forever. Maybe that's like some advice we all need to to, to slow your to roll, us. slow your roll. Slower rolls, yes. Agree. Yep. Cool, man. Well, um, if you don't have anything else uh, you want to talk about, I I think we can we can call it a night. Uh, I fully expect to have you back on. Um, don't try pigeon poop. <laughs> don't try. No. Yeah. yeah don't well, try pigeon poop. Noted. <laughs> I do not have. I guess maybe downtown. I got there's some pigeons, but yeah, though we do not have enough pigeon poop to do that. Oh, Brett likes llama poop. Yeah, nice. I've heard yeah. about that that emperor's new groove uh, substrate there they got going on. Uh, mm-hmm. Who is that? A plus that's doing that. Is that who's doing it? I don't remember. The the al- no, they have of... alpaca sub. That's what I'm thinking that's about. A... Their alpaca sub. Yeah, it's it's all it's all similar. Pachyderms, isn't that yeah. what they are? I guess uh, Earth, we just yeah. like weird poop. <clears throat> We just like put. Yeah, yeah. I find stuff. myself, I find myself throwing the monocle on and going, "Hmm, what it poop like?" You know, yep. <laughs> it happens. Anyway, so um, for everybody watching, if you guys have never uh, interacted with or uh, bought any genetics from uh, Dirty South Mycology, I highly okay. encourage you to give him uh, a try. I I can guarantee you will not regret it. Um, he is at dirtysouthmyco.com now. Yeah, the he's, the other one is the other one is still up because okay. you know I can't have people placing orders and me not fill them. So I'm Correct. still yes, I'm still no. tending I'm still tending to it, but I'm trying to transition. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and uh, do you sell these that cool shirt you're wearing? Oh yeah, I do sell this cool shirt that I'm wearing. Cool, man. Yep. Uh I might have to get me one of those. I do like it. And and that what is the name of that artist again? He does uh, a few people. Uh Dan I think it's Dan Ski's art. Yeah, Dan Ski's art. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's on Instagram. He's, he's got from cool across crazy. he's from across the pond. Yeah. But uh he's definitely a tr- uh trustworthy artist for your graphic designs, unlike a lot of people on Instagram. Yeah. There are a lot of people trying to scam you. Can a logo design this and that? Yeah, there's a bunch of, bunch of some some somewhere in Africa. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're sitting over there. And they're he's just, not going to draw just you a running picture. it up. Yeah, he's not going to draw you a picture. He's gonna he's just going to take your money. <laughs> not going to draw you a picture. Yep. All right. So anyway, uh, thank you for coming. Thank uh, you for we'll, we'll, me. we'll do it again for sure. Um, everybody, uh, man, who do I have next week? What is next week? Oh, I have, uh, we're going to go deep on grain, guys. I mean, we're going to go seriously deep. Uh, <laughs> Spencer uh, of Spencer Shroomery, he's also done quite a bit of travels, uh, myco-related travels this summer, so we're probably going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's a little bougie when it comes to his grain. He has definitely taken a very scientific approach about really looking at uh nutrition profiles and whatnot in grain and he buys some really unique grain and has grown on a lot of different grains so if you guys are looking to learn a little bit more about grain um next week we're we're gonna learn just about everything i think you could possibly want to know about it so i'm ready uh, to fuck around <laughs> tune in next week uh all right dirty south thank you so much all right guys that was brandon rice dirty south mycology one of the greats one of the goats you know, will will never ever be forgotten for a lot of us in this community. Um, definitely love that guy. Uh, cannot say enough good things about him. I hope everybody takes a minute just to see the enthusiasm, the passion, the drive, the the true pure love for cultivating mushrooms that he has. Uh, it, he he still got it, man. I know wherever that guy is, he is still cultivating mushrooms. I'm I'm gonna tell you right now. Anyway. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's a little, little, little bit difficult for me to get through, but uh, it's all good. We got to honor him. We got to remember him. And so uh, hopefully uh, people who didn't know who he was kind of get a 
get a, get a taste. Um, there are still people out there uh, carrying on his legacy through his genetics. Um, so if you guys are interested in trying out some dirty South genetics, they're out there. They are out there. You can hop in my Discord. I'm sure some people can can help you find some. Anyway, uh, till next week, go grow some mushrooms. Thank you.